Greetings, fellow Classic TV fans, and welcome to the Golden Rage of TV Live. I'm your host, Pat McCormack. Here we take a fond look back at our nostalgic pop culture of the past, leaning heavily into the realm of classic television. And on that subject, today I have something really special in store for you. I'm, I'm so happy to have this wonderful actress with us today. You would likely instantly recognize her as Sissy Davis on Family Affair, but the fact of the matter is her career spanned well before and continuously ever since. So we got some ground to cover, and with that, I'd just like to bring her on right away. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, the incomparable actress, author, chef, voiceover, I don't know what, what, what she doesn't do. So with that, let's let's talk to her. Ladies and gentlemen, Kathy Garber. Kathy. Hey, Pat, how are you? I'm so happy to see you. Oh, thank you, dear. I really appreciate you joining me. It's it's fitting that with this Golden Rage of TV live thing that I'm doing now, that my first bona fide celebrity guest would be you. Well, thank you. Uh, it's the fact is, you know. When I first started the Golden Rage of TV, it it was something that I was doing just as music, um, not realizing I was going to become a talking head after I blew my ears out, which, <laughs> of course, what happened. But I I just remember when we met. I was I was going to ask you, do you remember the first time we met? Absolutely. I, I won't forget it. No, because I was at an autograph convention and this charming young man <laughs> came up and I said, well, isn't he adorable? <laughs> you you just had such a lovely warmth about you. Oh. And you were uh, just instantly, you know how you can meet somebody and know that you like them right away. You just had this wonderful spirit and energy. And so I we chatted and then we chatted and then we chatted some more. And it, it was it was a memorable occasion to me. And I do remember it fondly. Oh, well, thank you. And it's like, it's funny, you just took the words right out of my mouth, because that was that was the same feeling I got. You know, it's funny, because, you know, it was it was it was Silicon Valley Comic Con specifically. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of celebrities there. And it was like, I think it was around lunchtime. So the crowds weren't as thick. And, you know, it was like, I'm going to the, I'm going to the autographs section, honey, bye, I'll be back. And I, I went, there's Sissy, and she's by herself. And it was the one moment where I could catch you by yourself. I went over and I said, hi, <laughs> can I have an autograph? And then started talking to you. And we talked for 45 minutes. We this, a lot. <laughs> this while you're, you're signing autographs, taking pictures and, and selling books. And I just remember you holding your finger up to me, as in, don't leave, I'm not done with you. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, this is, this is awesome. And of course, that's when I realized we were going to be friends for life because you were just, like you said, that person that instantly connected, showed co complete enthusiasm for what it was I was doing. And it was like, man, you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, it it's okay. And, and it was so creative what you were doing and taking the classic musics and, and putting them into kind of a, a modern theme. And I thought, this is so interesting and, and original. And that was one reason besides how charming. And plus, you, you bought a picture. <laughs> <laughs> and a book, I might and, add. Oh, and a book, yes. Uh, yes, I bought this book, folks, which we will talk more about soon because... You know, when it comes to autobiographies, it's one of the best I've ever read. But I just want to throw this up real quick. This is my favorite <laughs> shot of you and me. Um, and and actually, this was at a different different event, um, probably a couple of years later. And I just, I love this shot because, again, there's that feeling that Kathy just described. And you also cracked a heck of a joke. I don't remember what it was, but... That's a bona fide gut laugh right there, folks. And um, so it's ever since you've just been so supportive and I'm just, I'm over the moon over our friendship. And and again, how fitting that you're my first bona fide celebrity guest. So, yes, I feel very honored and very happy to be here. Oh, well, thank you, dear. And, you know, I know the fans love you. I know my followers love you. And so let's get started on okay. stuff. They probably, I don't want to say probably, they likely don't know 
about Kathy Garber's career. Again, you're obviously the iconic sissy, but let's face the facts. You started you started your career as a movie star, right? You just you just went in. Yes, why not? And I Full didn't on. go in expecting to be a movie star. <laughs> but you were, and yeah, there's this little film, The Night of the Hunter. Now, that is you with Robert Mitchum, am I right? I played Sally's double in this movie. Oh. And I was oh. in more scenes than, than she was in. So that and was... Because, yes, because I she see, was see. only six and I was eight. And I had been dancing ever since I was three years old. And mm. she really had not done anything. Uh -huh. And uh, Charles Lawton, who directed the film, and this yes. was his first and unfortunately last film that he ever directed, um, want, and it was just a stellar cast with Robert Mitchum and Shelley Winters and right. Peter Graves and Billy Chapin, who was Lauren Chapin's brother from oh. um, The Father Knows Best. And right. he wanted uh, this kind of innocent girl that was, you know, not quite there. I don't mean that, you know, pejoratively. I'm just saying that just so young and innocent and just had no clue what was going on, <laughs> which was a great kind of character. But that precluded her from doing a lot of the acting and a mm -hmm. lot of the dexterous things. So it was me all the way on the river and it was me cutting right. up the money and the doll. And it was it was me doubling her almost in everything. And then uh, it was me appearing as another character at the end with Lillian Gish. So it right. was a, a fascinating movie to be a, a part of. Oh, yeah. And when it first came out, it was just panned and people just thought it was awful and what creepy. is this and creepy. Yeah. Because it was so ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. And it was based on this kind of esoteric term called um, German expressionism. Right. Which was, you know, the effects and and adding the haunting music, it became one of the best hundred horror films ever created. And it right. has such a cult following. I was in uh, Utah and I was at the university there and at the film, uh, with the film people and the theater students. And uh, I started telling them a story. And this is one of the, the first movie I ever did was Night of the Hunter. And and uh, how many people of you have ever heard of that? Every single person raised their hand because it was one of the films that they studied in the film department because of the way it was, the cinematography, the art direction, the acting, Robert Mitchum, Lillian Gish, I mean, and, and the haunting. Shelley movie. Winters was just like, whoa, scary. Yeah. Yes. And the, the scene where she's in the water with the hair streaming back and, oh my and old Birdie finds her. Oh, I mean, if, if people haven't seen it, I mean, they, they can You've see got it to, on, yes. On many different platforms, but it is one really good movie. And it's a shame. I wish, I wish Charles had known that it would be such a lasting impression and have the, just this life that, and I, I guess from my understanding, he was quite disappointed. Very, the, because I'm never going to do another film. What a shame, what a shame. A, I, I, uh, I showed this to my son when he was, I think, 12 or 11, 12. He's 31 now. And in the movie, Robert Mitchum plays this, this murderous preacher. And he has H-A-T-E and L-O-V-E, yes, imprinted on love his hate. knuckles. And then, you know, he's always want to say, and love battles hate and hate battles love. But <laughs> love comes and love wins. And I said, well, that's, that was powerful. And I, my son saw the movie and I said, how'd you like the movie, Reed? And he says, it was great. Look, mom, L-O-V-E-H-A-T-E. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have created a, a monster, a beautiful creature. And that's Reed, right? That's Reed. They, and by the way, they're tattoos, mom. <laughs> oh, God. Thank God that they they weren't so much uh, tattooing those days. He still doesn't have tattoos. Good for but him. Any place that I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I again, I look back at that film and I just, I kind of wish Lawton was in it because I was such a fan of him. 
I mean, Mutiny on the Bounty with Gable. Holy smokes. And then, of course, Quasimodo. I ring the bells. I ring the bells. This way. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What a what a talent. You know? yes. So at least he has, a, you know, he left his legacy in that realm. Right. Um, Absolutely. But so, of course, now your career takes off and you move into another, it was just kind of a small, it's a smaller production film. I don't think, I don't think many people have seen this one. It's, it's kind of a, kind of one of those uh, Nickelodeon type. Okay, <laughs> let's face it. This epic is probably one of the greatest films ever made. The Ten Commandments. It, yes, I, I went from horror to holy, and it was really <laughs> uh, quite a step. And it was interesting the way, first of all, I got the job because I, uh, after Night of the Hunter, I got a bona fide agent, mm -hmm. and Hazel McMillan, and so she sent me out on this big epic because she had another one of her uh, clients in the movie, uh, Mimi Gibson. And so uh, I was just to be an extra. So I got all dressed up in my extra robes and this is during uh, the exodus. And I, 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 my assignment is to be on this wagon with uh, a lamb sitting by me. And so they say, you know, after then I hear this great big voice say, don't let that little girl's face get in the camera. And I said, oh, what did I do? Did I do something wrong? And who is that? Is that God? <laughs> I'm not there. Well, it who could be. I was like seven years old. But in that movie, it could have been, you know. Yes, you he never a, knew where the voice of God was coming from then. He had a role. <laughs> yeah, a big role. <laughs> he was actually the star of, of the <laughs> <laughs> and, and so it was Cecil B. DeMille was on this great big crane, you know, taking an overshot. So I guess he saw me. The assistant producer came over and says, oh, okay, you put a blanket on your head. And after it was over, they take me off the wagon and here comes a crane down and Cecil B. DeMille. And so we chatted and we chatted and he says, oh, good. OK, nice meeting you. And so the assistant uh, director says, well, looks like you're going to be on this movie a lot longer. And so DeMille wrote scenes into the movie for me and with Charlton Heston. And that picture that you just shot up that showed with me coming down the stairs, that was the first one. And then there was the meeting of that one. Yes, I'm. I'm going down looking for my doll, Rebecca. Where's Rebecca, Rebecca? And you were you were Rachel. Right. Rachel and, and Rebecca. Right. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to mix those two up. But I was just going to say that that scene I love catching every year because oh, yeah. it's on every year. And yes, it is. It's and you, you come down the stairs and head to the well. Right. And that's that you are definitely the focal point of that scene. And I just love how you get there. And it's like. Excuse me, I'm about to take a 40-year walk in the desert. Can you please fill my canteen? And then you look just totally, you know, miffed at these people. And I, that, that's awesome. Oh, I, am. I don't know if she's it. actually acting there. I think she's acting. <laughs> well, isn't it the same thing? It's it's just putting it in a different place and a different emotion sometimes. Well, you showed your talent there and your potential and what was going to be a, a lifetime of incredible work and i just thought man there she's got it right there <laughs> I, that's that that's that acting thing yeah. um and of course you did work with this other actor uh, i can't remember his name either uh, oh mr heston was was quite something and Chuck. very awesome oh i'll bet i mean when demille said here's your lines did you say and do i have a close-up mr demille <laughs> Yeah, where's, where's my close-up he said yeah just hang out with that guy moses he'll he'll yeah. get you in there uh, and of I course, <laughs> in, in the book, and again, I'm going to throw the, this this book. You folks, you've got to get this book because Kathy is not a, just a great author, but just the way you lay all lay out all the experiences of doing that epic film. I I, I seem to recall a real problem with parting the Red Sea. Ah, uh, yes, 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 and that's it's a fabulous anecdote, and it's so funny, and yes. it's so true. Amazing, uh, and I know that even reading it. People will laugh when when they read this chapter. I mean, I gave a whole chapter to Night of the Hunter and to the Ten Commandments yes. because there were so many things that went on right. and so many things that were memorable. Well, we won't spoil. We'll let no. people, folks, you got to get it and you got to read about this because these scenes are so, I mean, these chapters are so fascinating. 
Well, what? I wove them together like a making a quilt. So each one of the chapters has uh, some kind of a sewing analogy. Right. Um, not that I sew. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, what I do. <laughs> I do. I was going to say, of course you do. Because quite frankly, I, do. I don't think there's anything this woman doesn't do. Well, That's what you get when you're a Sagittarian. You can't decide well, what you want to be when you grow up. Well, you're an inspiration. That's for sure. To me, yeah. especially. But, um, you know, again, you continued on. You had other acting roles. Um, of course, you were on the Patty Duke show. And that's, a, that's quite a step. Because that was I kind of popular. Patty. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was Patty's friend, Monica, and right. we got along so well. We were just about the same height, the same age. And we it's, it's again, like you meet somebody and you know you like them right away. And we stayed friends up mm. until she unfortunately died way, way too young. Oh. I interviewed her when I, I had a talk show called Backstage with Barry and Kathy. Oh, yeah. And it, I just um, hosted a marathon for classic uh, reruns TV oh, about yeah. the Patty Duke show. And so I provided some anecdotes and, and we showed um, four of the episodes, three of the episodes that I was in. And just she was just finishing this uh, book called In the Presence of Greatness and with, with her friend. And unfortunately she, she passed away just before mm. it came out. Well, I was honored to do the audio book, yeah. their variation of it. And right. it was so interesting to me as I'm recording, it was like her spirit really came wow. into me. And, and I, I, I kind of in, uh, imitated her voice in, in mm. some of the passages, but her spirit was just right there speaking. Wow. So, that that was again another honor to to narrate her book. Wow. Jan Jankowski wrote that. Well, and and Kathy, you're such a talented voiceover actor, and and you do these narrations, and it's, I mean, you studied with the best. Dawes Butler. I, I remember you were you were with me and Derek Zamrak when we did the uh, Voiceover Actors Hall of Fame ceremony, and you gave a tribute to Dawes Huckleberry right. Hound. Huckleberry Hound, among many 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 others. Oh yes. Um, and um, so I'm sure that that helped you own your hone your skills in that aspect. But you know, you're first and foremost on screen actress, um, one of the most beautiful that ever graced the screen, the small screen. And the, and so with that, you know, you're off to college. Things are moving on. You're you're, you're doing the right thing. You're at UCLA, and you get this opportunity to be on this series, which some people may recognize as Family Affair. And I, I understand from the book, all you had to do was dye your hair green and you got the gig, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, kind of. I was at uh, the Pi Fi house at UCLA and uh, going to school, I got a call from, from my mother and she says, well, I talked to your agent and they have a new series. It's been sold. Uh, they have the whole cast except for the teenage sister. I said, oh, okay. Said, you have to be in Westwood, you know, in four hours. And I said, what? You you have an audition for this. And I said, okay, that's great. She says, the only thing is they want uh, somebody with blonde hair and I think blue eyes. I'm not sure. And uh, so I said, but mom, I have brown hair. She says, not to worry. I'm bringing you over some streets of tips. And uh, this was the substance back in the, the 60s. You spray your hair and it instantly right. changes it blonde. I, I wasn't blonde then. <laughs> I don't use strips, strips and, uh, anymore, streaks and dips. I use L'Oreal dye. <laughs> I don't know what color my hair is. Really, I haven't seen it in about 30 years. But <laughs> at that time, my hair was like in the Ten Commandments and very dark. And so my mom dutifully sprays my hair. It felt like a helmet with this thing on. But that was okay. And we sped across. She drove me over to Westwood and oh, I met dear. Mr. Hartman, the creator producer, and we were chatting. I tried to look as young as possible again, because I was supposed to be 15 and there I was you know, in junior in college, but I, I'm, I'm, li I'm like five foot one. So I can kind of pull off younger parts. It's getting harder these days, but <laughs> I'm drinking though. No. Um, so I, I'm talking with him and, and he's a very nice man. And he says, what's the matter with your hair? 
And I said, Matt here? He says, yes, it's green. green. <laughs> I said, oh, green. Oh, must be the light. I swim a lot. <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. And so, but it was fun. And, and uh, we, uh, we got along well. And Hazel called. And uh, they decided that I was going to wear a long blonde wig for the, the, uh, the test. So I went to Max Factor, got this long blonde wig. I had this blue and white check dress. I look like, you know, Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, do the, I do the thing talking to the director and the producer. And, and they're already filming. They're already, they're already starting to shoot the show. Wow. And uh, I'm glad we're not like on Facebook because if I sh said shoot, then they would block me. <laughs> no. They would think it's fun. No. Yeah, they, read, fun. they were ready to film the uh series and so i get a call from my agent and she says kathy you got the job and i said great she said a caveat two caveats she said never wear that dress again and never wear that wig again I said, you got it <laughs> i'll take it and burn the wig so well, anyway that's a story of, of how i got it now that's my own hair and that was yeah. strawberry blonde i think at that time and of course, this is this is a nice picture. It's black and white, of course. But you know, again, speaking of hair, I mean, maybe that was the precursor for what what Sissy had to go through on just about every episode. Now, I will say, when it comes to hairstyles, this one is my favorite. Ah, yes, the side ponytail. The one of many, and and then of course we have the, a, a, a variation. Variation on that. with the hair down with with the ribbon. And the, and the variations continue. Yes. Oh, then oh. In, the in the fifth season, I decided to cut it all off. Wow. And, and I thought, boy, you know, you're looking at these. I'm looking at these gorgeous pictures of you. And I'm thinking, I'll bet Kathy's picture was on the mirror of just about every hairdresser in the country. As an example, you too could look like Sissy. And I bet a lot of people, were, I mean, you were a trendsetter. I mean, well, act, you know, it's it's interesting because uh, they were wearing big hair then and all kinds of intricate curls. Right. And I did a whole like uh, photo shoot with all the different kinds of ways that, that you could wear it. In my in my latest book, I have some of the, the hairstyles and, and I think from uh, that particular photo shoot. But, you know, that's one of the things that I, I had. I, I did it on purpose in a way. Because I think at that time Peter Bruck or the uh, the other one was was left Big Valley because he said, oh, I don't want to get stereotyped. I don't want to get stereotyped. So it was important to me not to get stereotyped as sissy. Now, oh. but you you look at at Mr. French always wore the same thing, and right. Brian always wear his hair the same. It was sure. a little blonde sometimes, a little grayer sometimes. Right. Anissa always had the little ponytails mm -hmm. and Johnny, you know, always had the curly red hair. So, and and Anissa kind of wore the same things with the short skirts and, and the uh, thing. So I said, well, I don't want that to happen to me. So I, I think that I, I got against that, but at the same token, I'm not as memorable in some aspects because you say Buffy, oh, and you you think of ponytails, or you think, or you say Mr. French, and you think of his his valet office, and you say, oh, and Sissy, oh yeah, she was a teenage sister. She had a lot of different hairstyles, right? <laughs> so. Teenage six sister slash heartthrob, folks. That's <laughs> that's the fact. Somebody had to. They had to have a pretty girl on there. And boy, I'm sure you got mail. Um, but it's you know again. The, the countless, how many hairstyles? Do you, I love this picture because it's like it's like Sebastian Cabot's like another hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> That's that kind of a look he has on his face. You know what? What are you doing to this poor girl's hair? You know. And actually, that was the very first year, and that was a wig because I had oh. short, short dark hair, and so they wanted longer hair. So I wore a wig at, at the beginning. And then my hair grew out and grew and grew. And then I said, okay, let's just cut it all off now. Well, so how many? I, I just I just wanted to shoot that question out. How many do you think different hairstyles did you have on that show? Wow. I guess. 13. Wow. 
13. Absolutely. Because then I, I would I would play with it. And I said, oh, I think I'll put mine in a couple of details. Oh, no. 14. <laughs> 15. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. incredible. Well, yeah, I mean, again, with that last picture, I I wanted to talk to you about, you know, of course, you, you spoke much about Brian Keith and what an incredible... Uh, man, he was. I know you. You honored him by having uh, uh, giving the speech at his Hollywood Walk of Fame induction, which was just incredible. Because what a body at work uh, with him. Uh, but I will say, besides Sissy, my favorite character on the show was this guy, <laughs> Mr. French. Now, of course, this is just a thumbnail of me selflessly promoting myself. But of course, <laughs> I, I I did an episode on Sebastian. And of course, I had to include you in the thumbnail at least. But <laughs> I have to ask you, I mean, what was it like? Can you just just give me a brief fond memory thought? Or, or, or I mean, did you hate him or did you love him? Or, no. Oh. No. <laughs> How could you? The coolest <laughs> thing that I can say is I went over to his house one time and he was having dinner. And he was always represented, and even on the stage, he was he was very professional, and, and he learned his lines and and everything. He went over to his house for dinner, and he's in his sweats and he's cooking, <laughs> <laughs> and so that was definitely a role that he was playing, and he played it beautifully. Oh yeah, I mean that among many. I mean, of course, here he is as the as the evil, I don't know if he played the devil in this episode of The Twilight Zone. I loved him in that. And then, of course, The Time Machine, my favorite sci-fi. Well, it's actually one of my favorite classic films, period. Yeah, yeah, it's great in that. Um, but so just an overall good experience with him. Oh, yes, totally. He and he and Brian were quite different from one another, oh, especially yeah. in style. And yeah. as I say, Sebastian read and memorized his lines, you know, incessantly and wanted everything perfect. And Brian would come in the morning we're going to shoot. And he says, what do we have today? Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> it was a nice dynamic. I just, I admire actors that, that are like that. I, I, as you know, I worked with Wally Kurth on General Hospital for a while. Um, played in a band with him. And that was his thing. These actors would really be studying their, their stuff and they'd get on and be, and Wally would come in and say, uh, what do I got? Okay, let's shoot it. <laughs> one take. <Yeah. laughs> be like, yeah. wow. That's, we call them one take Wally, you know, because it was just. When that. you don't have to get it word for word, it's much exactly. easier because sure. most actors will get the gist of it and, or should. What's, what's right. this about? What am I, you know, what do I want to do? What's my action? And then we'll go with it. And it's much more relaxed if you don't have to say it word for word the way the writer has written it. Uh, if you do, and especially in commercials, I did a commercial on Monday. Well, that was word for word for word. No, it's uh, no, I, I think it's the, oh, you were right. But because I had said, oh, okay, I'm going to get, I know that they want it like that. But other times it's much more relaxed and you can say. It's it's so yeah. funny. You just brought a memory back to me. When we had first met, and I, well, it wasn't when we first met, but after we got to be, become friends and I started doing the Golden Rage TV, retro TV episodes, and I put it out to the, Kathy, how, how, do you, how do you look natural when you read a script? Because this was different for me. I'd done some minimal, minimal work as acting. And it was just like, this is this is a different animal for me. And I remember you said, don't worry about verbatim. I remember you said that to me. Just just get the get the gist of it and say it your own way. That's right. And like you're talking to someone, you know, yes. and, and that takes the onus off of you. Like, I have to mem memorize every word and, and be perfect. You don't have to be perfect when you right. just look at someone and, and talk to them. It, right. And that, again, real. I'm talking to a camera. So it's like, you got me, buddy? You know what I mean, bro? It's like, <laughs> wait a minute. You're not a person. So <laughs> I better just, but again, I've always admired your acting. And I know it continued on after Family Affair. I, I've got to throw this graphic up real quick because there you are in the Big Valley. My favorite classic TV Western, possibly one of my favorite. Well, it's up there in my top five classic TV series, period. And you're there with Richard Long, Jared, of course. And I just got to ask you, Kathy, what was it like working with that cast? That cast. Fabulous. And they shot right next door to us at CBS. They were on the next stage. And I didn't work with everybody, 
because I, I don't think that I worked with Lee Majors, but mm. with um, Barbara Stanwyck and Richard Long and Peter Brecht briefly. Who I and love. It was, <laughs> I was supposed to um, do, do what I was doing and then fly to Washington, D.C. for the inauguration of the president. Mm. So <laughs> I, I came off the set after I did it and it was helpful that I had one of the chauffeurs from the set. They took me to the airplane and I'm taking off all my stage makeup and putting on, you know, just regular makeup. And then I go to the restroom to, to change into this ball gown, <laughs> the airplane restroom. Uh, <laughs> put the ball gown on to go to the White House and and, and also wow. the balls. So <laughs> I remember that a lot about the big valley. I also remember riding the horse and then getting in the mud and shooting a gun. It right. was a lot of action going on in that. Oh yeah. I mean, you were the star of that episode. I just, I just loved it. It's funny. You just said I, we filmed right next door and I was, I was just going to really quick hit on something that was during family affair that I saw in your book, if I'm not mistaken now, Star Trek. Uh -huh. You <laughs> snuck over and you snuck over and watched them filming Star Trek. Or, or just yes. walk right in, like you own the place. I can't remember the exact. What was Sometimes the I do that. I, but <laughs> that was our the first year of Family Affair, and they were also shooting at Desi Wu, right. which also became Paramount. And people were saying, oh, this is just such a neat set. And I didn't have anything to do that day. And I said, well, I want to go see. So I went around the corner. They were. And yeah, I did just kind of walk right in. And I think someone may have said, oh, I'm, I'm working next door, you know, on, on Family Affair. But I was surprised because Family Affair was shot like a movie. And right. the the directors and the producers and writers all came from this fabulous history of film. So, right. and we shot on right. film, but we would shoot the master and then we would do a close up and a close up and go on and occasionally do a two shot. Well, I go right. over to Star Trek and there are the people in there by you know uh sitting at the panels and here is the camera and it is dollying all the way around and picking up the shots of the various people and that went on and went on and went on and they did the shot for like about a 13 minute shot Holy and it was God. it was amazing to me and yeah. uh, I, I was i was very impressed well, I can imagine, and I, I assume they expected it to be a 13-minute take, because, man, you ruin that 12 minutes in, you're not going <laughs> to that's, 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 like, that's like getting on in Texas when they have that, that great big highway that goes round and round. If right. you miss your exit, it's all over. you got to start all over again. So I know what you mean. Better not yes. mess up at, at, you know, at 12 minutes. I had the same experience in Pittsburgh. You miss that one exit, you got to drive 10 miles to get on another exit that lets you turn around, but you got to pay a toll first. Okay. Well, I'm not paying that toll. <laughs> it's like, what's a toll anyway? I'm from California. Wait, what? You got to pay tolls. a toll to take the freeway? Oh, it's not called a freeway? Oh, I see. <laughs> so, well, anyway, we're sidetracking there, folks. Yes, we are. Right? This is why we like each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and and again, your cameos continue. Oh. Folks, folks, do you know where your daughter is right now? <laughs> I mean, talk about trouble. Yes. Well, I was Adam trying Blessing. to change from my sweet Halson. And, and there was another hairdo, by the way, which <laughs> I'm guessing that was definitely a wig. But No, that was mine. That was my hair. See, so <laughs> I know guys sometimes just don't know about hair. Don't let me don't let me be a fact person here, clearly, because uh, <laughs> I'm I'm pretty good, but uh, I, yes, that was definitely Kathy's hair. Uh, yes, on, that, that, that's right. I had lunch the other day with uh, Lloyd Schwartz. Who did the oh, yeah. all the Brady Bunch one sure. two five hundred thousand brother of Sherwood eight hundred right. thousand yeah. uh, Brady's and uh, he wrote a play uh, that I was in with Chris Knight and and Fred Grand and we right. at five I saw that. So we're, yeah. a couple of weeks ago we're sitting and he says oh and I'm working on this other project he says you might be good you know we need a person with fluffy hair <laughs> to me only a guy would say fluffy hair <laughs> I mean oh you mean 
curls or you need a little, you know, <laughs> you don't. Really I, w- I would have said, I would have said poofy, but go poofy. ahead. Poofy. Poofy hair. <laughs> yeah, that, that will be another hairstyle. <laughs> Well, again, it's I, I was always so amazed by by your career and what what you've done in there. Of course, yeah, that Adam was 12. from Adam Twelve, right? Yeah. With and I, Barbara Hale played my mother, and I think one of the reasons that I got the job is because I look a little like Barbara, um, yeah. who unfortunately passed away about three years ago, I think. Oh. Um, but that Della was Reese. the color of my hair, and that was my hair. Or not Della Reese, uh, D- Della Street. Della Street on Perry Mason. Right. Yes, I, I will be your fat checker. Thank you. Because I called You're her welcome. Della Della Reese right there. And there's no there's no editing of that, man. It's just, you know, <laughs> hey, we're live. Uh, <laughs> but you know, of course, you got in your voice acting and mm-hmm. um studied with Dawes and, and and of course that led to animated series roles, such right. as there she Fire is. Folks. Star. Firestar from Spider-Man and his amazing friends, of course, which you were one of. And tell me a little bit about how you got that gig. Well, actually, I was living in San Francisco at the time. And uh, I flew down and I did an audition. And uh, I flew back. Then I flew down again. (laughs) And I uh, auditioned then with Frank Welker, who became the next Jaws Butler. And I think now is surpassed Oz in the number of oh. voices that he has done and the right. number of projects and Dan Gildazan who played our Spider-Man and they right. weren't sure about Dan and he writes about this in his book so I, mm. this is no tale and, and they're my best friends Dan and his oh. wife Giselle uh, mm. but so they weren't quite sure if he was going to be uh, Spider-Man but they got the triumvirate and Stanley says this is this is our group and that was like the first time that there had been a show with characters created especially for an animated show that didn't start out with a comic book first oh. so there was no firestar comic book and hmm. and character and then they translated over to an animated television show so that was a little bit of history that they right. started and it was really great. And then after the show, Firestar had a, four magazines, four comic books after her. And just this year, they came out with a Firestar action figure. Yeah. Oh, look and, at that. And a statue. So she's she's still going strong. I must awesome. say, it is a celebratory year. I'm taking from last year over to this because it is the 55th anniversary of family affair so Ooh. odd because you know i'm 39 and yes i don't know why they say 55 it says it right here in my facts yeah. yes. yes check mm-hmm. those facts and the 60th anniversary of um ten commandments and firestar in spider-man i think is is coming upon a big one and i'm doing another anniversary thing which will be the 62nd though, anniversary of the Garden Grove Strawberry Festival. The and Strawberry I am the celebrity Festival. grand marshal of, that's it, of the Strawberry <laughs> Festival in Garden Grove. Yes. Now, again, it says 2022, but now when is that exactly? That's in May. In May. Okay. So this is 2022 now. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes. And so that, that will be May, Memorial Day, and I'm going to be the leader of the parade and awesome. finding my books and it's a free event it's it's fabulous it's been going on as i say for 62 years in garden oh, i don't know how many strawberry plants are left from 62 uh, years ago there are a lot of houses around there now but i was gonna say I, I didn't know garden grove was popular i thought there was there was oranges i know that was big in that yeah, area they are close to orange county i'm right. going to disneyland next week with my my son and his future daughter-in-law who oh. lived with us for seven years oh, nice. <laughs> how nice how yes. nice um, well, let's touch on one other thing here. Um, you and I have something in common, not just because we're buds, but because ZPTV. Ah, yes. The Roku channel ZPTV has one of your shows, and it also has one of my shows. It's actually oh, that's cool. Oh, did you, oh, do they have your show on too? They do. It's you oh, know, I'm it's so glad to hear that. Yeah, it's been there for four years. Um, oh. and maybe did I introduce you to them? No, uh, oh. Derek just found me. Derek Zemrak found me uh, on the on the on the web and social media. 
at least that's his story. Maybe it was something you said. I, I, was, I was thinking maybe Kathy steered him my way. I don't know. But fact is, we've been friends and you know, did the induction ceremony. And, and he had what I call a retro view. It's the same thing. It's the same thing as retro TV trivia, the, the, the bits. But they just could join together to make longer segments. And we call it retro view. And you, you'll see me on there. And, of course, Kathy has this series. Golden Star Watch. Yes, yes. I want to hear a bit, like everybody else, wants to hear a bit about this one. What can you tell us? I can tell you that I interview the celebrities that have stars on the Walk of Stars in Palm Springs. I have mm. actually a star on the Walk of Stars. Yes, you do. Because I, I had a condo there for about 30 years, and I have a wonderful brother who mm -hmm. lives there and he says kathy you should have this so yes. he pushed me to go do this because you know i'm i'm a little quiet and shy and you know things come and i said okay and so anyway i had the star but i love this show and the people that i interview are so interesting i did lindsey wagner and right um, yeah and uh, all, all kinds of gavin mcleod before unfortunately he passed away and trini lopez just he passed away so i'm glad that I got them and and I I interview them right there on their star in Palm Springs. So you have, you know, some of the the sound effects of people, you know, coming by and but they are all so used to talking. And Joyce Boulefont and, and her husband Roger Perry I did together because they each have a star right next to each other. Oh. So that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Well, yes, continue, continue. Now, is this still going on or is this, was this something you already sh I've, shot? I've already, I've already shot it. Okay. And okay. so it's, it's a whole series that right. is now being played. Fantastic. So, well, I'm, get I'm in and watch that one. Watch that yeah. one, folks. Um, Kathy, you've always had great stuff. I call it the good stuff. People will get that. But the, the, the merchandise that you that you sell on your website is is fantastic i i also you know i appreciate it because you you're so kind you send me you send me a package every christmas and it's got it's got the new stuff it's you know and let's see what let me run this by here really quick take i'm doing some on the fly editing here um the i'm, I'm okay listen to me folks this is this is showbiz okay <laughs> I'm listening to you. Thank you. The the books for one. Here's X Child Stars. That's the one that I have a copy of, um, and I loved this. But it's an earlier release. Um, of course, you can find Surviving Sissy there, and as you can see, as in scrolling down here, the scented candles, the cameo calls, and all the great merchandise. But the newest thing that you sent me last Christmas is this. And I absolutely love it. Tell us a little bit about the scrapbook, Kathy. This is my latest book. This is my fifth book. And this is a compilation of pictures and memorabilia. And then there's a section on all our super guest stars, like Ida Lupino and Robert Reed. And I do vignettes on all of those in the books and in trivia. And it is just, it's like taking a step back really into the 60s and, and early 70s and being right there because the colors right. are so vivid, the way that the book is put together. We had a great art designer and uh, Deborah Herman, who is the publisher, you know, right. really helped put the things where they should go. And I think it's, it's, it's just a delight. And I've had such good review. I am just blessed to have had great reviews on all my books from the Family Affair Cookbook, which was yes. my very first book. And you know I'm into cooking. That and I know. Yes, I've tried yes. your recipes. I have. And they're yes. amazing. That was my first book. And then The Surviving Sissy, then The Ex-Child Stars. And then this was another one that's a right. cookbook. And that's with the holiday recipes for a family affair. And that's uh, Scott. For every holiday. Scott Weaver, who yeah. is my uh, co-author. And mm. then The Family Affair Scrapbook. Now, the Surviving Sissy was such a, a success that they also brought it out in paperback, paperback. this year. Right, and right. so that's to celebrate the anniversary. And also, it's it's a cheaper version. I don't want to say cheaper version. A less expensive version. That's the word. collectible version. <laughs> I also have 
uh, this scrapbook comes in a collectible version and a paperback version. We brought those out together. So that's, fantastic. That's, that's my book. And my the one that I'm working on now that hopefully will be out soon is TV Dinners TV because uh -huh. we're working on, we have a pilot for a new, we have a couple pilots going on, but this one is TV Dinners TV. And yes. that is, will be a cookbook uh, as and guide as well as uh, the, the pilot that we're doing. Excellent. And so of course that website is kathygarber.com. And I went ahead and put up just now, I put up your social media uh, addresses. Folks get in and follow her because she is active. Yes, and I'd love to have some friends on my Kathy Garver slash fan page on, on my Facebook. Yes, and please. So, yeah, because I have, you know, my the, the one gets all filled up with the personal one. And sure. so I can ha I have lots more rooms, lots more room on my fan book page. And there's all kinds of things that, you know, go on there. Right. Well, I, pur I purposely left it out of this so that you could actually mention it and talk about it. So I knew you did. I, I knew, that's that's the way you work. <laughs> just just the facts, ma'am. Well, <laughs> gosh, Kathy, this is this has just been incredible. I yeah, and I, it looks like this is my movie year. I I have been cast in like four movies. That's right. That's what I yeah. wanted to talk about. Oh, please share yeah. that. Um, I started doing Old Man Jackson that we shot in Houston last year and Butch Patrick is in it and it's really a good cast and wonderful producer Johnny Ray Gibbs from Houston and mm -hmm. uh so I'm going to go back to Houston pick up a couple more shots that should be out this year we're going to have a red carpet in LA and one in Houston then I've been mm -hmm. cast in a wonderful I love this movie called The Broken Road and mm -hmm. it's about uh, a vet with PTSD and is kind of lost and, and homeless. And he comes to our ranch um, and, uh, and a, a relationship blossoms with my daughter. And mm. it's, it's really a heartfelt, really interesting movie. Sure. The other one is You Can Take It or Leave It. And that's with Danny Trejo and Eric Roberts. Wow. And, uh, that's, and then uh, I just signed up for this other movie about Christmas. And it's A Mother's Christmas. I play the mother. And uh, it's about my family trying to get together for Christmas. I've always wanted to do a Christmas movie. I did Hercules Saves Christmas with Derek Zemrak. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, I play, and I played a nun in that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I'd like, to, I, I like Christmas. And so this is a nice Christmas movie. So I have those, those set up, of course, then with the regular appearances that, that I'll be doing. I'm going to Roanoke next month to right. uh, do the Happy Trails convention yes. i'm going to reno for the silver age comic con and i'm still waiting to see if i'm going to do williamsburg uh in uh for the uh, nostalgia uh, convention and so there you, there you have it folks an interview with the energizer energizer bunny yeah don't blow your lines pat don't blow <laughs> you your can lines. say it again when you say the, it again ladies and gentlemen the energizer bunny she keeps <laughs> going and going, and I, you know, I am always just so impressed with the fact that you work so much. You just never stop. You've been such an inspiration to me, and I'm sure as you are to many, many others. And uh, you know, just I just want to say thank you, Kathy. Your 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 work, your legacy, your inspiration is just it's one for the books. I mean, you're a, you're an American icon, and. Again, I, I just, I'm so honored to have you join me on this. And again, it's just been fantastic. <laughs> well, thank you for your invitation. I so admire your energy, your spirit, and oh. keeping, you know, history alive and with your, your retro um, age. Oh, well, thank you, dear. And of course, dear one, that's my nickname for Kathy, by the way. I call her dear one. I don't know if she likes it or not, but that's what you are. You are my dear one. <laughs> <laughs> and so with that, we'll go ahead and say goodbye now. And again, thank you. Keep working, will you? Get a job. Yeah, I'll, try. I'll go on another audition. Hey, <laughs> another meeting. You grab another commercial, just right. another one and another. And it's just yeah. like, oh, it's like I said, you're a true inspiration. And with that, I will bid you a fond farewell. <laughs>